Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this Jagdpanzer IV L48 late version. This 172nd scale plastic kit is by Hasegawa, and it is my first time building a kit from Hasegawa. It was fairly cheap, so it was quite easy for impulse buying Herbert to say yes to this. There's nothing on the back of the box, which is pretty standard for scale models really. Wargaming kits usually have something on the back. Ah oh well. At least the front looks pretty, right? There's an explosion and a Panzer IV firing in the background, and who doesn't like that sort of thing? Inside the box we find six sprues in a light grey plastic, two of which are identical. The two with all of the wheels on them, just in case you couldn't tell by me having them side by side. There is also a set of rubber band tracks. If you've been around my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of these, but in the interests of being fair, these do look okay. There is a little bit of detailing on them, though they are a bit bent in the packaging. Certainly not the worst rubber band tracks I've ever seen. The rest of the parts look pretty good. I wasn't entirely sure what to expect, having never built anything by Hasegawa. The price of the kit told me not to set my expectations too high or anything like that. So I guess I would say that I'm a little bit surprised at the detail on this model. In a good way. I mean, it's not super detailed by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not too bad at all. The parts are pretty neat and tidy, and it looks like it should build up to be a pretty good representation of a Jagd Panzer IV. There will be mould lines, there always is, but they weren't excessive on my example, and they're easily removed anyway. I couldn't find any horrendous flashing or moulding defects, so it looks to me as though everything will go together nice and easily. This decal sheet is also included. There are adequate markings here, but not a whole lot of variety. That's okay though, if you really want something that isn't here, I'm sure you could find some other decals yourself. Having not used them, I can't speak to the quality of these decals, but they do look decent enough. And of course, so we aren't just gluing stuff together unguided, instructions are included. I like this small set of instructions. They're clear enough for the most part, and the sheet doesn't flop around and get all in the way. Nice and neat. Let us begin the plastic and gluing. The first thing I did was rebel against the instructions. It says to build the gun first, but I decided to do the running gear, which needs a few holes drilled in it before anything else. This is easy, just make sure that you're drilling in the right spots. The reason I'm doing this first is because I want the road wheels and suspension to be good and bonded before I attach the rubber band tracks, which will almost definitely impart some pressure and thus pull all the parts out of place if they've just been freshly glued, and we don't want that. Into the two drilled holes I install these mounts for the return rollers. There is a little bit of play here, so I try my best to get them on nice and straight. Then I attach the return rollers. This is also very simple. They're just small wheels with a bit of a depression in the back that locks into the mounting posts. Then I add the inside half of the idler wheel. This goes on easily and can be followed in quick order by the outer half. The spokes on these should line up, though there didn't seem to be any keying to help with this. If there is, I must have missed it. Once that's done, it's time for drive sprockets. The inner part has no keying, which shouldn't really matter too much. There is keying where the inner and outer halves join together though. This is meant to ensure that the sprocket teeth align, but there is a lot of play there so I had to visually line the teeth up myself. Not sure that I got it perfect, but I did my best. Next it's time for the road wheels. These are easy enough to install, there's just a lot of them. There is a bit of play in them, so pay attention and make sure you've got them on as straight and neatly as you can. I glued all of the inner wheels on and then the outer wheels, but you can put them on however you like. Except outer wheels before inner wheels, I guess. That seems a bit less than possible to do, owing to the outer wheels attaching to the inner wheels. The result looks pretty good in my opinion. I put both of these assemblies aside to give them plenty of time for the glue to bond. In the meantime I went about assembling the gun and mantlet. The gun did need a bit of cleanup, and has a separate tip. I believe the main reason for this is so that the end of the barrel could have an opening, rather than being flat. There seems to be some keying here, but it's not really useful, and I found I had to nudge and twist the parts until the fit was acceptable, and in the end it does look pretty decent. 
Then I slot this T-shaped thing in through the back of the gun case mate, I think that's what you would call it, and I add glue in the back. And then I put the mantlet on the front. You could of course guess at the positioning of the mantlet, but I decided I would test fit it against the hull, just so that I would have a good idea of where the gun would be pointed. Test fitting is good. Then I glue the gun into place. Not much to this. We don't need to worry about the alignment of a muzzle brake or anything like that, because there isn't one, and it ends up looking very gunny. I put this aside, and then return to the running gear, because it's time to glue the tracks on. Because these are rubber or vinyl or something, plastic cement isn't going to work on them. So super glue is what we use. As you can hopefully see, I'm applying the glue to the tracks, and then sticking them down bit by bit. Though I do start at the drive sprockets just to make sure it lines up as best as it can. This was kind of fiddly and annoying. Probably not a surprise to anybody. The pins that were meant to link the tracks together were rather ineffective, so I cut them off and am now relying on the glue to hold everything together. The result is okay, though at the front, around the drive sprocket, things are a bit wonky. It seems as though the teeth don't quite poke through the holes properly. There didn't seem to be a whole lot I could do about it, so I just moved on and glued the hull side parts to the upper hull. I suppose you could also glue them to the lower hull part, but doing it this way seemed like there would be more parts for the hull sides to bond to, and it would be easier to make sure the parts were on nice and straight. Once I was satisfied with that, I attached the hull bottom part. This did need a bit of pressure and some nudging to ensure the gaps were kept to a minimum, but fortunately it doesn't take too long for the glue to start bonding, so you don't need to spend your entire day holding this thing together and waiting. That would be rather inconvenient. Also, before doing this, be sure that you've drilled all the holes into the hull that you need to. I neglected to do so and regretted it later on. Not too badly, but regrets all the same. When that was done, I assembled this muffler, which as you can see is comprised of two parts. A little pressure is all it takes to get it to go together without too much of a gap at the ends. We've got to have somewhere we can install that, so I figure why not add the rear plate. Not only will that hold the exhaust in place, but it will also fill that huge gap at the rear of the hull. Two birds with one stone, really. Once it's in place I add the aforementioned muffler, for which there are two holes it mounts into. It goes into place just as easy as it looks, which to me looks very easy. Then I attach some shirts and brackety hanger thingies. There are two of these for either side at the rear, and they're pretty simple to get into place. There won't actually be any shirts and to hang off of them, so there's no need to worry too much about getting them perfectly aligned. Maybe having them a little bit imperfect is realistic. I'm sure they get bumped around a bit. These things that go on the sides of the engine deck can then be glued on. These are different for either side, and probably won't fit on the wrong side. Anyway, the one with the tools on top goes on the right side. I then install this. I think it might be a gun cleaning kit. My fat fingers were too big to install this, so I dropped it close to its spot and then used my knife to nudge it the rest of the way. Then, above that, goes this thing. It's a rod thing of some sort, I don't know. Again, a bit of nudging with my knife was needed. I then installed these platey things on the sides of the engine deck. These were pretty fiddly, though it didn't look like it would be as challenging as it was. I nudged and pressed and fiddled until they were on about as neatly as I figured they would be. The fit isn't quite perfect, but it's not the worst, though it was a bit annoying to install. I got there in the end though, or somewhere close to there, wherever there is. Then I install this plate, or is it a hatch? At any rate it goes into place here next to the vent thing. I follow that with this antenna mount in the right rear corner of the fighting compartment. A bit of nudging and it's in place. The jack is then installed at the left rear of the engine deck. I drop this into place, add glue, and then nudge it into the final position. Very jack. There are two sets of spare road wheels that could be mounted on the engine deck. I neglected to drill the mounting holes for these before gluing the two halves of the hull together, so I just sort of glued one of them in place where it looked like it should fit, and omitted the other one. Looks fine to me. We can just make up a story that the crew has used the other one, so it's not there anymore. Cool story, Herbert. 
I then glued this bar to the spare track links. This is what holds them to the back of the hull. And now, witness as the very smart Herbert Herbert glues the spare track links on the rear of the hull upside down. I did manage to fix it later at least. I then install these little lifty brackety things, which are, as you can see, very small, and I think it would have been a better idea to install these before the muffler, but I was able to nudge them into place with my knife. Fiddly to be sure, but certainly doable. Then I figure why not add the main gun assembly. This fits onto the front of the hull just as you would expect it to, and it goes into place quite easily, though a little bit of pressure was needed. Looks reasonable to me. Still a few more details to go though. Why not add another pair of little brackety things? These were slightly easier to get into place than the ones at the rear because there's more space to work with. Still a bit fiddly though. Then this. It looks like a stud you might find on a leather jacket, except this is plastic. Whatever it is, it goes into place here. It seems like there should be another one on the other side, but there isn't anything to fill that space in. I'll probably have to fill that in with putty because I don't think that hole should be there. The fire extinguisher goes on next, below that stud thing, whatever it is. Make sure that it doesn't obscure that mounting slot in front of it. That slot is not for the fire extinguisher. It is for the forwardmost shirts and bracket though, which are pretty simple to get into place. A little bit of twisting so that it sits vertical and it's on. I then turn my attentions to the roof, and installing this curved platey thing. There are guide pins for this so it only really goes in one way. This would line up with the direction the gun is pointing, so I do think that facing the gun any direction but straight forward would be a bit incorrect. I'm not going to stop you from doing it though. I follow this with the periscope, which is tiny and fiddly, and took a bit of nudging. Then comes the round hatch. Is this for the commander? I'm not entirely sure. It's for somebody, and it goes into place very well. I follow that with the larger portion of the rectangular hatch, which goes in just as easily. And then there's this little forward part. There's not a whole lot to these hatches, but they're on and they look good. Much better than having big holes there anyway. Next comes this little round thing. Maybe this is an air vent cover. Whatever it is, it's on. Then I install this small headlamp on the front left mudguard. This is tiny but not too hard to put into its place. It ends up looking very headlamp. The final details to add are the rest of the shirts and mounting brackets. These were quite fiddly. It didn't look like they would be at first, but they were. There are guides for them, but it was tricky to nudge them into what looked to be the correct position. And they did end up looking a little bit rough, but not too bad. I do think it's a little bit strange that the Shirtson isn't included, but it looks interesting to have the mounting brackets there anyway. And with that, the Hasegawa Jagdpanzer IV in 172nd scale is now complete. And as you can probably see in these end clips, I have fixed it so that the bar holding the spare track links is below the guide horns, you know, to actually hold them in place, rather than sitting above them and just looking silly. For the most part I'm fairly happy with this model. I would say that the weak point is definitely the tracks. They're certainly not the worst rubber band style tracks I've ever encountered, but they're not the best either. They have a strange angle to them at the front which is probably partially caused by the sprocket teeth not fitting properly, and partially because the material isn't rigid, which does allow things to bend and flex and look bad, at least for parts that are meant to be straight. I probably could have spent more time on them to try and get them to look better, mostly around the sprocket teeth, but I didn't. Oh well, there are plenty of ways to hide or distract from poor tracks. The rest of the model looks pretty decent. Again, not perfect, but it does look like a Jagdpanzer IV, and I'm pretty sure that's something that people want out of a Jagdpanzer IV kit. There are some spots where I'm going to have to do a bit of extra work before painting this, the main one being that recess on the front left of the casemate next to the gun. The instructions do point it out and say to fill it, so that is what I will eventually do. Not in this video, obviously. Normally these videos are to show how the kit builds up without any extra filling or modification. So in my opinion, this model is pretty decent. I think the detail is good. 
I'm sure some of you can spot a bunch of things that are imperfect about it, and I'm no Jagd Panzer IV surgeon, so I won't pretend I know all the details. Do keep in mind though that this is a fairly cheap kit, and it's in a relatively small scale. There are going to be omissions of detail, whether to make the kit practical to make, or just because those parts probably wouldn't be visible anyway. Keeping all of that in mind, I think it's pretty good, and I'm sure it's going to paint up nicely and be a decent representation of the prototype. The build was quite enjoyable. Most of the parts went into place easily enough without too much fiddling around. Notable exceptions being the little plates on the sides of the engine deck, and the shirts and brackets along the sides of the casemate. But they did eventually go into place and they don't look too bad. You probably won't be too surprised to learn at this point that I did this build on stream, and I did manage to put it together in that one single stream, though it was a pretty long one. Anyway, it was fun, and if you want to come hang out while I build models live on stream, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp, or go to the link in the description. Give me a follow and you'll be notified when I go live. I also play video games, but I expect most people watching this are more into models. That's okay. Come hang out and it'll be a fun time. Okay, so the build went well for the most part. I would have been happier with link and length tracks, but for my first experience with a Hasegawa kit, I'm pretty happy and I will certainly be willing to try more of their kits in the future. In fact, I did pick up a hind by Hasegawa a little while ago, so I'm going to build that at some point as well. Anyway, now I'm just waffling. So let me know what you think of this model in the comments below. Do you like Hasegawa kits? Do you have any other Jagd Panzer IV kits that you're especially fond of? Have you got pictures you would like to share with us on Discord? We would love to see them. Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a member or patron, and all the other things you do on YouTube and social media. Links to all the things including Patreon and my Twitch channel are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.